In this video, I'm going to be talking about a tool that I've been using a lot lately called Raycast. Now up front, this tool is only for Mac at this time. So if you don't have a Mac, if you don't use Mac, you use Linux or Windows. There are some alternatives, but I've never used any of those. So I cannot attest to any of those. Maybe someone in the comments will offer some guidance there. But if you are using a Mac and you do want to use a tool that will help you in your workflow and become more productive and help you with a lot of sort of shortcut tasks and some other things that I'll be talking about towards the end of the video, then stick around. So first and foremost, what exactly is Raycast? Well, if you go to raycast.com, you'll see that they have this really nice looking website that sort of describes what it is and how to use it in a basic way. And what I kind of want to do in this video is not go through an in-depth tutorial on all of the things that Raycast has, has to offer. There's a lot of resources on that already, and the Raycast YouTube channel has some pretty good videos as well that shows you how to go uh, a little bit more in-depth into how to use some of the features of it. Instead, in this video, what I want to focus on is how I use it in my day-to-day -day developer flow why I think it's an important tool and why I recommend using it along with some of the special features that I use pretty often. With that out of the way, the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to raycast.com and you're going to want to download it. If you look over here, there's a download button. I'll go ahead and click that. Once it pops up, go ahead and drag it into your applications folder. Now you have it installed. So the, the very next step you're going to want to do is head over to your search bar over here and type in Raycast so that you can open the app. Go ahead and give it permissions. And now Raycast is open. As you can see, it's basically this window that just pops up very similar to Spotlight, I think it's called. This is essentially going to be a replacement for that and much, much more. So let's go into a little bit about what I mean. The first thing you'll want to do is with Raycast open, you're going to want to click this grant access button. You'll see that permissions authorize Raycast to access shortcuts data is highlighted. Go ahead and click enter there and give it the permissions that it needs. And just like that, it's all good to go. And I can actually exit out of here. And I believe the default shortcut key, at least for me, is option space. And when you just press uh, hold option and press space, it opens up this window. Now, as you can see, I can scroll through here and you can get a good idea of some of the built-in commands. I can kind of walk you through a few of these. Calculator history, uh, my schedule, so you can set up a schedule in your calendar of choice. One of the things that I use a lot and I'll be talking about shortly is this clipboard history, which is incredibly valuable. I'll go over that in greater detail in a moment. But again, this is sort of what you have uh, when you first open it up. And most of the time when you're using it, the reason why I like to use it is because it helps me with my developer workflow. Now, when I think of a good developer workflow, what I think of is that state of mind you get into where it's almost all muscle memory and you can kind of zone out and get a lot of stuff done. You get into this state of focus and flow that it's kind of hard to describe. But one of the things for me that kind of interrupts that flow is constantly having to move over to my mouse, find something in a UI, click on it or find some application or this, that and the other. There's a lot of small monotonous tasks as well that tend to interrupt me and sort of get me out of that flow ever so slightly. I just want to zoom in and have 100% muscle memory going. And Raycast really helps me get one step closer to that. So kind of jumping right into here, I'm going to open up my VS code by using Raycast. So I open up Raycast and I simply type in VS and you can see Visual Studio Code just pops right up. And if I click enter, it opens up Visual Studio Code. Now, in this case, I'm going to open up a folder that I've created called Sandbox. And I want to paste in some React boilerplate code that you tend to type a lot when you're using React, which is basically just creating a new component. So I'm going to cut this and I'm going to open up my Raycast and I'm going to type in snippets. Now you can see there is a few different options here. I'm going to click create snippet and I'm going to call this React function boilerplate. And I'm going to paste in that exact same code that I just typed in. And then I'm just going to call this React Component Boilerplate, RCB for short. And then as you can see, there's this create snippet shortcut. All you have to do is hold command and press enter and it creates it. In this case, you have to grant it a permission. You only have to do this once. So I'm going to open up my preferences and offer. Oh, yeah, I have to do this. 
and just give Raycast the permission there. So now it should be good to go. And we can hold Command and press Enter, and it should save. And as you can see right there, it said created the snippet. So now, whenever I go and create a new component, let's just say uh, new component.tsx, and I want to type that in really quickly. All I have to do, and this is way faster than typing it in manually. Just think about how I'm going to just go ahead and show you first. So um, open up Raycast, type in snippet, select search snippets. And as you can see, this is the only snippet I have. So it's already highlighted. But if you didn't have this highlighted and, or if you have a bunch, you can quickly search for it. So in this case, I would say react function and it would filter out exactly what I'm looking for. And then if you look on the bottom right, you can see that you can paste to code. And what happens is if I click this, it automatically pastes the snippet into VS Code for me. So it was one click and it automatically put it into my software for me. Another option would have been to hold Command and press K to see a list of commands. And when I do that, you can see again, paste to code, copy to the clipboard, share snippet, pin snippet. You can do a lot of stuff with snippets. In this case, I'm just going to um, paste it directly into code because I think that's the best way to go about it. It's super convenient. So if you just think about that, I mean, you could have tons and tons of code snippets that you use day to day basis, Git commands, all sorts of things that you know that you type all of the time and you can quickly access it with just a couple of keystrokes, copy it directly to your clipboard or paste it directly into the software that you're using at that time. So convenient, so fantastic. I'm serious, this is a game changer for me. I'm not even joking. Another thing that's really interesting since we're on the topic of VS Code, I should go ahead and introduce the idea of extensions. So if I pop over here and open up my Raycast, the first thing I'll type in is store. And I wanna type in VS Code. And as you can see, there's a extension called VS Code Project Manager. And if I click enter, it just shows an overview of it. And I can click enter to install it. And then it's installed. Now I press escape to go back. And once I'm on the main page here, if you will, I'll type in VS Code again. And now I have two options. One is just to open the application, which is super convenient because let's just say I'm off of uh, VS Code and I just wanna open VS Code, I can just do this and then bam, it's open. But also now I have this extension where I can search the project manager. Now you have to have the project manager installed in VS Code for this to work. So just go to the extensions within VS Code and install that particular extension. Raycast will actually walk you through that. And once you get everything set up, you should be able to um, hit enter and see your, your projects that you have set up in your project manager. And what's really cool about this is because like if, when I first open up my computer and I know, hey, I wanna work on this particular thing, I can just walk right over here, click enter, and now that project itself is open. It eliminates even more small little tiny boilerplate monotonous tasks that kind of get you out of your developer flow. And I think what I really love about this tool, other than some of the things I'm gonna be showing you in a minute, is how unbelievably fast it is, but also that it's all keyboard centric. So I can open up my Raycast and navigate entirely using nothing but my keyboard. And if it's really far down, um, I can just simply uh, type something in and it filters it for me. I don't have to touch my mouse. To me, moving my hands away from the keyboard, grabbing the mouse, finding something within the UI, scrolling, moving my hand back. I know it sounds so trivial, but it really does affect my ability to stay in the zone. And what's so great is like, you have this actions thing over here and a lot of these apps within here, I guess I could call them apps or extensions, or I'm not sure what the exact terminology is, but a lot of these things within here have all uh, uh, several different built-in actions that you can use. And all you have to do is use shortcut keys to access them like Command K. And now you have access to sort of like um, a command palette, if you will, of different things you can do with it. Never having to reach over to the mouse. It's all built in, super convenient. And now let's get into some specific ways that I use it in my actual coding to help me with some tasks that, again, just makes things way easier quicker and less monotonous. So let's take a look at this index.html page I have. I'm gonna zoom in ever so slightly because I'm sure it's kind of small. I don't know if it'll let me zoom in. There we go. And if you look, I have three list items here, each one with a unique ID. Well, now they're unique. And 
what I want to be able to do is copy each one of these over, paste it into my CSS file over here so that I can style them individually. Now, in a normal workflow, what you'll end up doing is highlighting each of these one at a time, pasting it over here, and then you'll come back over here, copy this one, paste this over here. You get the idea, one at a time. Very, very monotonous. What you can do now with Raycast is you can actually highlight this one press copy now highlight this one press copy now highlight this one press copy and i just copied three different ones now if i were to just paste using the native mac os operating systems paste command it just pastes in the last thing that i copied but what i can do with raycast is open up my raycast and type in clipboard and now i have access to everything i've copied so starting from here i can just uh, click enter to paste into code. You see this little shortcut here, paste into code and then bam. And then all I have to do is again, open up Raycast, press up, paste into code. And then the last one again. So think about how many buttons I'm clicking here, right? So I'm here, I open Raycast, that's one command. I move up to this one, that's two. And then I click enter. It's that quick. Although I accidentally selected the wrong one, you get the idea. And let's just be honest here, there's a lot of times you copy something and then like a couple of hours later, you can't remember exactly where you found it, but you've already copied something else. And you're like, man, I really wish I had whatever that was I copied so I can paste it again, but I can't remember where I found it. So you're going through your search history on Google Chrome or whatever to find what it is you copied. Now all you have to do is pop open Raycast and just look right there through your clipboard history. Game changer. But that's not all. Along with the same context of um, clipboard history, there's also screenshot history. So for example, on this side, let's just say I want to take a picture of some code over here. So I take a screenshot of some code right here, but I also want to take a picture of some CSS. And then I also want to take a picture of the feature in the browser itself. So then I have three different screenshots. Um, what you can do now is open up Raycast and type in screenshot and you can see right here, uh, paste recent screenshots, search screenshots. If I click search screenshots, okay, you have to update your permissions. So again, these are things you only have to do one time. But once I do it, here's a history of all my screenshots. That's insanely convenient. Now, again, you have this ability to hold command and press K to see a list of actions. And you can see I can paste this image directly into code, which I wonder what that looks like. Okay, so it's just the file name. That's interesting. What other options exist? You can copy the text from an image. Now that's really interesting. Let's see what happens when I copy the text from an image. And when you want to do this command, you just basically press this key combination that's right here. So in this particular case, if I hold command and I, I think that's shift and then C, now I copied the text to the clipboard. If I go down and press paste, what it did, or at least it attempted to do is it copied all of the text from my screenshot. In fact, I think that's actually perfect. Because yeah, if you look up here, the image sort of has the uh, this top part cut off. So it starts here at this meta tag and goes all the way down to the header and copies all of that text out of the image. And you're able to paste that into whatever it is you want to paste it into. That is amazing. This is an amazing feature. I'm telling you, I'm hyped up because this tool is actually amazing. Another thing that you can do with it, which I can't demonstrate too much right here, typically this is gonna be more beneficial when I actually have my external monitor hooked up and I've got a bunch of windows going on at the same time, but I can kind of demonstrate how it works here. If you open Raycast, there is actually a list of commands that you can use that position and resize windows. So if I pull this open and type in window and just do last third, you can see that it resizes the window over to the last third, if you think of it in columns. Now I wanna move it over to the center third. So now it's in the center third. And there are so many options here. I can um, do the center two thirds. Um, I can do all kinds of stuff. Maximize, maximize uh, here. Boom. You can bring it into full screen. You can put two windows next to each other. You can move windows between screens. So one way that I use that a lot is obviously I'll have VS code open here and then I'll have Google Chrome on an external monitor and I'll be typing in my code here and then I'll open up Chrome. Like if I just open it up from the menu here, a lot of the times it just pops up on the same screen as I have my code editor. So I'll just very quickly just type in previous screen or I think it's previous display. Oh, I see. So you actually have to have the external monitor hooked up to see some of these options, I think. But when you click that, it will move the window over to the uh, screen on the left. And if you have three screens, you can do 
you can basically cycle them through. And this is, again, super great because I don't have to click on the uh, screen tab here with my mouse and drag it over and then reposition and resize it to fit exactly how I want. I can just have this all assigned um, within Raycast. And also there is a way somewhere within here, you'll have to look it up on either on Google, the documentation or Raycast's YouTube channel, but you can set hotkeys within here, custom hotkeys and assign them to certain actions. So if you really have a good flow that you like to use where you know, hey, I like to have my code editor here and I like to have Google Chrome over here. And then I like to have the console window underneath that uh, Chrome window, you can assign hotkeys to basically um, automate that process. And it's again, super, super fast, super, super convenient. So another thing I'm going to demo really quickly is I think we can all agree if you are doing work as a software developer, you're probably going to be listening to music. Now, my personal choice for music software is Spotify. I will almost always first thing in the morning, sit down, put on some headphones, put on some lo-fi beats typically, or some sort of music similar to that. A long playlist where I can focus and, and I just zone into the music and, and start doing work. Well, a lot of the times the Spotify UI can be pretty distracting. Okay, so if I open up my Raycast and I type in store, I can go and type in Spotify. Now you can see there's a Spotify player plugin. And if I click enter again, you can see the details about it. All the commands um, are listed here. Click enter to install. Boom, it's installed. Now all I have to do is type in Spotify and Let's just say we want to search playlists. So I'm going to search playlists. The first thing you have to do is link your Spotify account to Raycast. So if I click sign in with Spotify, click agree, open Raycast. You can see how this all flows really well, super quick. Now I have this window where I can search playlists and it's not at all distracting whatsoever. So if I type in lo-fi beats, I can see the playlist that I listen to oftentimes is lo-fi beats by Spotify. If I click enter, it's going to start playing it. I'm not going to do that with this because I don't own any of that music and I don't want to get a strike on YouTube. But all you would have to do is click enter and it would begin playing that music automatically. If I go back and I just want to type in like tracks, uh, search tracks pops up and I can type in moon wash down. That's my, that's the song I made. As you can see, it begins playing. And also with this, there's also a Spotify I think it's called, let me see, there is a menu bar player. So if I click that, a menu bar player will appear up here. And I think that's pretty cool. But there's a bunch of other things you can do here with the Spotify um, <clears throat> plugin. You can like the current song. So if you're like me and you're listening to a playlist and you hear a song that you like and you want to like the song, it's very easy to just pull up Raycast, like the song. Or if you're not sure what the song is, you're like, wow, this is a really good song. I want to know what it is. You can click now playing and it will pull up information about the song. You can, you can be like, oh, I remember that album art. I know this album. You know, you get the idea. Super convenient, all within Raycast, hotkeys included, you search, like never having to touch the mouse. Another reason um, that I love this tool. And again, I, I, I will kind of wrap this up at the end, but there are a couple of other features that are kind of mind blowing that are coming soon. I happen to have access to the beta, which I'll talk about in just a second, but I just want to say I've been waiting for a tool like this for so long and Raycast has been out for a minute, but I just think that this tool is, is definitely worth hyping up. So one last thing before I talk about some of the really amazing stuff that's coming out soon is some of the quirky things that I think are just kind of cool because why not? For example, you can actually pull up Raycast and type in confirm confetti and when you click enter it blasts confetti up and you can assign a hotkey to that again you can assign hotkeys to any of the commands and for example control option command and then c and confetti will pop up and i know that sounds ridiculous but let's just say you're pair programming with somebody and someone says something brilliant and you just want to shoot confetti up really quick and they can see your screen just a fun little thing that um, Raycast can do. There was another one too. I think it was called Bounce, Toggle Bounce Animation. If, if you're from, I think it's like the early to mid 2000s DVD players, that little bouncing animation. It's just simple stuff like that. That's, that's just kind of cool. Um, I don't know all of the ones that are in here. I think there's a couple other quirky little interesting things, but just wanted to point those out. Okay, so now I want to talk about a couple of the things that are coming in the future and I have access to the beta. So I kind of wanted to show you what these are and how I'm able to use them. Now, 
I know everybody's talking about AI right now and ChatGPT and Copilot X and all of these things, but in reality, these tools are extremely, extremely helpful to developers. Um, and I find myself using ChatGPT or Copilot to do a lot of boilerplate things, things that I know I could do, but it would take me a, like a bit of time to do. I can just have ChatGPT do it in a very short amount of time and then basically I'll review that code to make sure it looks good. I'll tweak some things and it just saves me a bunch of time. And Raycast being a production-based time-saving tool has some AI features that are actually pretty amazing. So typically when I wanna use something like ChatGPT, I'll go to chat.openai.com and I have to be within the web browser to do that. But let me show you an example. Um, I'm just gonna create a JavaScript file. So we'll call this script, script.js. If I open up Raycast, first thing I have to do is sign in so that it knows that I have access to the beta. So I'm gonna type in account, click that, log in, and then I'm going to sign in using my Google account, open Raycast, now I'm in. So now if I reopen Raycast here, I can have access to some AI tools. So as you can see, there's search AI commands, create AI command, ask AI, these are currently not available to most users of this app. And this is a free application, but I'm pretty sure in the future, once this goes public, it may be part of a paid tier. So keep that in mind, but let's just see what this has for us. So I'm going to type in ask AI and click enter. And this essentially pulls up what, what I'll call a, uh, like an instance of chat GPT, if you will. And I want to say, write a Java script function that takes a number of days and a date object, okay? And I want the function to return a date object that represents the number of days since uh, today. Click enter and it produces a JavaScript function extremely quickly. I hop over here, I click copy, let's paste it into here. And now we have a JavaScript function that does exactly what I asked it to do. So let's try to run this really quick. Um, underneath here, I'm just going to console.log. So console.log, let's just say get date from days. Let's say uh, five days from today, uh, the date object the date object is not used. I'll actually show you in a second how you can update the function. And I'll actually be doing another video on how to use chat GPT to as like your programming copilot to be able to do stuff like this. But just want to show you in the context of Raycast right now, let's just say get date from days five and run this file. You can see that it logs March 30th. Okay, that's five days from today. So the way that I worded it was uh, a little bit off. So what you can do is come back in here and say, actually, I want the date to be N days before the current date, not after. So then it's going to rewrite the function very quickly. Um, and then let's see if it works now. So paste that in, save, do it again. And now it actually corrected itself. So just by saying, hey, that's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted it was able to correct itself and give you the right function. Now I can say, can you write uh, a test suite for this function using Jest? And then it's going to do that typical chat GPT stuff, spits out a test. I could paste this in and run it, but I don't have Jest installed and that's a lot of um, <laughs> uh, outside context to what it is I'm trying to say. But I think you get the idea, right? So you could just be, coding away here, you write a function, and you're like, man, why isn't this function working? Why can't I get this function to work the way that I expect? You can very quickly, uh, very quickly pop open Raycast, type into chat GPT, hey, why doesn't this function work? Paste it in, maybe it fixes it, you can copy it, paste it in, all kinds of things. Do you see how amazing this is? I mean, really, this is, to me, the combination of what Raycast already was alongside chat GPT, it's, it's a massive game changer to the way that developers are able to work now. And I get that a lot of people are concerned about AI taking, automating their jobs and stuff, but I don't think that's something we need to worry about right now. Instead, you should be focusing on how can I use these tools in a way that will improve my workflow, improve my work and make me more productive or make my job less difficult. And there are tools out there 
like Raycast that make this as easy as possible. And again, this is a beta right now, but it'll eventually come out and I highly recommend you check it out when it does. But all in all, Raycast itself is a free tool. And I think that just being able to sit down, get into a good workflow, mastering those keystrokes, knowing what it is you wanna do, just being able to open Raycast and get to it very quickly and do all the things that you wanna do without touching your mouse and going through UIs and like having a bunch of windows open and different tools that manage different things is super great. And even there was even a, uh, a notes app within it. So if I go, I think it's called like floating notes, floating notes toggle floating notes uh if i open that you can see this like notes window here like maybe i do a to do uh one create a pr to ask for reviews whatever now that window is just floating there it's another great aspect of this tool that i think just adds to the value of it and one other thing you can write your own extensions for this tool and as you saw there's a store with a ton of other extensions so really the possibilities are pretty much endless for what this tool is able to offer you so i mean all in all that's really all i wanted to talk about in this video is how i use this tool in my workflow and I think you can kind of get an idea of how within your own workflow, even if you're not a software developer, you can use it to your advantage to automate so many different things and unlock new possibilities like the clipboard history, the screenshot history. Having the snippets is like one of the biggest thing, but like, I mean, when I'm talking with uh, coworkers and stuff, I find it very helpful to, to have that clipboard history, the screenshot history, especially in my line of work where I wanna share screenshots and Slack and that sort of thing. It's just absolutely fantastic. That's gonna be all for this video. I am going to be uploading a video soon, like I said, about using ChatGPT as a co-pilot to help you be more productive as a programmer, not for it to do all of your work for you, but for it to help you do your own work. And um, yeah, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video.